Welcome, ladies, and thank you for speaking with us today. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So tell me a bit about Afro Chic. What is it, and uh, where did the idea come about to set up this organization? Afro Chic uh, started in late 2009 as an idea to have an event that focused on women's hair, specifically black women's hair, and how we could empower ourselves to appreciate our natural beauty and it's evolved past hair into body and self-love and self-empowerment mm -hmm. and uh, it started with myself and Amoy and two other ladies, Misha and Natasha. Um, and we had our first event at Libra Lounge and we focused on spoken word, uh, performances, music, and a fashion show, Okay. and visual art, and we've continued that into 2012 with those themes and entertainment. And so how did those themes sort of grow? Because starting out with uh, natural hair, and particularly for black women, and, and that is a contentious issue for a mm -hmm. lot of black women. How do you grow from that and make it so it's not just for women with just natural hair? Um, some of the feedback that we got after our initial exhibit or showcase, if you will, was that it was exclusive and we weren't opening up our audience to women with processed hair, women of other races, individuals of other communities who you know, felt impacted by what we were trying to do, the movement of Afro Chic. So we sort of changed our format and we built on it and we developed the idea around art, business, entrepreneurial um, business ventures and focusing on developing as an individual and that's where we are coming up with this cultural arts exhibit concept because we didn't want it to just focus on hair, we wanted it to focus on an all around layered idea of people in the arts who celebrate different aspects of themselves. So um, after she cultural arts exhibit expanded from just a hair exhibit, a hair celebration to art celebration, uh, business celebration, community, family, uh, different orientations that support the arts and things of that nature. Oh, that's great. So what would you say is the organization's main mission? to empower youth between 16 and 29 and mainly our focus is on women but we've expanded our our mandate to reach out to men as well because we know that they're large supporters and that they're part of our community as well so we can't just stick to one gender right and i think afro chic has grown significantly as we started out with an event now we have a camp afro chic pilot that we started last year so we'll be doing it again this year we have afro chic tv we have the afro chic newsletter the website is amazing um we have afro amazing. chic programming right. where we produce brunches uh where that includes community talk back sessions and it's usually hosted in beautiful community spaces run by black or African individuals. We have even just smaller gatherings and get-togethers focused on different topics that are appealing in whatever is happening in the media and society and the community. And we've just broadened our horizons. And we're just trying to do big things in Toronto and abroad. So you're looking to expand outside of Toronto area or keep it strictly within the, the Toronto GTA area? I mean, we have... Honestly, in the first few years, we didn't anticipate that it was going to grow where people would ask us, you know, when are you bringing Afro-Chic to Montreal? When are you bringing Afro-Chic to New York? When are you bringing Afro-Chic, you know, overseas? And we've been getting a great response. And so the reason why we've developed these programmings and these uh, different sessions is to build more awareness and build a higher profile around our name. Mm -hmm. So eventually we can get out there. People are telling us we should. So we're like, you know what, we should. And we do plan to bring Afro Chic to the overseas. We're looking at Europe right now, um, England as the hub for Afro Chic cultural arts exhibit maybe in the next few years or something like that. Uh, we recently went to 
Africa, we were in West Africa, Ghana, and we're thinking about the idea of bringing our camp there for the summer in the next few years. Right now, our camp is based in Ontario. Last year, we went to Niagara Falls, but imagine bringing that to Ghana, how crazy that would be for the kids. Uh, that would be amazing for the children and their mothers. We're just thinking about um, expanding here and uh, abroad. No, that sounds incredible, um, especially the idea of going to Ghana and taking your camp there. Can you tell us more about uh, Camp Afro Chic and what that entails? We invited young girls about preteen age and their mothers, which was a challenging um, feat in the summertime when a lot of times parents want to drop off their kids mm-hmm. <laughs> because school's out. Yeah, yeah. But it was successful in that the ladies that we brought because we're able to partner with the ladybugs at the St. Lawrence community. So it was a great, great to have a group that actually came out to an event that we had about talk, uh, having a conversation about hair at the Rock Paper Sisters Festival with The Current. So that same group we got to work with a few months later, which was excellent. I think this year we'll take a stronger pull, maybe a more strategic pull on how to get the mothers at least out to one of the days that we have camp days, if not all. Okay, and how long does the camp run for? Is it a two-day camp, like a weekend camp? It was a weekend camp. Uh, We're thinking about, depending on the revenue that we receive, from this event, it could be another weekend camp or a full week camp. Okay. Well, especially right. if you go to Ghana, you would probably need a little bit more than a weekend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We'd definitely be fundraising. On, the fundraising procedures would be going on all year, so right. it would be year-round fundraising. That's great. Speak to the camp and actually the exhibit that is happening on June 9th, 2012 at the Great Hall, the proceeds, so the revenue that we come up with and the money that we raise, will be going towards Camp Afro Chic. That is exactly why we go hard with the promoting because we want a lot of people to come out and see that we're not all glitz and glamour, just trying to be fashionistas and and we have a vision and a purpose that we are trying to communicate through our Camp Afro Chic and our other initiatives. So Mm. this exhibit finances it. And it also gives us an opportunity to celebrate artists in our community who don't necessarily have the spaces to be celebrated or have the um, option of promoting themselves. Now, are all the artists local Toronto artists? Uh, where Whereabouts are these artists coming from? They're all local. Uh, and the per- artist performing is a group called Ronnie and Nani. We have Spec One, the rapper. Uh, we have the violinist. Uh, we have Savannah Ray, Jer- Jerome Good. So you think you can dance uh, as AC Mensa? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that sounds really great. So it's a performance as well as you're showcasing visual art as well. And, and a fashion uh, and, show. And fashion show. And those are all local uh, artists as well, the fashion designers. and. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Now, you were mentioning about what your mandate and your mission was um, and you brought up the media, and on your website it talks about one of your goals is to dispel the negative stereotypes that you can f- see in mainstream media. Um, mm-hmm. Now, what right. what stereotypes in particular are you working on trying to correct and try to show, hey, we're not like that? This is a one-track idea, a very narrow idea of who black women are. A lot of negative stereotypes, that they're angry, they're single, uh, they're bitter, and even around natural hair, right. um, that women with natural hair are not appealing to black men and they're not sexy, which is, you know, it's it's unfair and it's untrue. And because we have such a great network of amazing, beautiful, talented women, we try to show that visually and also face-to-face or as interpersonal as possible. There are so many different stereotypes, like building on what Ariana was saying, there's so many different stereotypes, even within our communities, right. even within our groups, uh, that we we just want to shut down, and we want Afro-Chic to be that platform to dispel all those things, to give people, like, a totally different vision of what it is to be successful, um, to take ownership of something, to, to do everything. We fund our projects 100% by ourselves up to this point. Mm-hmm. We put our heart and soul into this 
we don't rely on grants and funding and we are solely putting this together and it's important for us to do this because we want to show people that you know what we have to take ownership of of things that we want to own in the end you can put out as many businesses as you want but if you sell it off or if somebody buys it or it's acquired it's not yours anymore and your vision gets lost so right. i think it's important for us to be strong in what we're doing it times get hard it's a struggle and it becomes a challenge but it's exciting in that the end result is it's ours you know what i mean we own it we are feeding it and it's prospering because of our love and our our vision right and that's a that's a great message to send out not just amongst those within the um, African community or black community, but also uh, other communities as well, which I'm, I'm guessing is part of your mandate to dispel the stereotypes within the community and with other communities as well. Right. What other projects, other than Camp Afro Chic and uh, the cultural event, what other projects do you have on the go or are you hoping to get going? So at the moment, we have Afro Chic TV, which was just launched as a pilot in October. Mm -hmm. Our vision with that was to sort of be like the bridge between youth, pop culture, and arts. And we sort of wanted all of those elements to combine to create one media network called AfroChic. For more information, where can our listeners go? Okay, so we currently have a Twitter going. at www.twitter.com slash AfroChicTO. We have our YouTube page, which is also named AfroChic Teal. Our website, of course, www.afrochic.ca. We have a Facebook group. It's just AfroChic on Facebook. Those are the key ones, our Facebook, our Twitter, and our website. Okay. Um, for people who are interested in coming out to our exhibit, tickets are still available. Advanced tickets are available on Eventbrite. You can purchase them through visiting afrochicteal.eventbrite.com. Tickets are $20 in advance and $25 at the door. Uh, the exhibit takes place once again June 9, 2012 at the Great Hall, which is located at Dover Court in Queens. Great, great. Thank you so much, Adriana and Amoy, and uh, all the best, and, and uh, I hope that this event goes off absolutely wonderfully. And that was your independent arts report uh, uh, featuring on Afro Chic, the event taking place on June the 9th at the Great Hall. Go to www.afrochic.ca for more details.